In today's video, I'll be going over how to make digital contact sheets, going step by step through my process, and how I use them to review and make selections of my film photos. If you're new here, my name is Faisal, and I'm a photographer based out of Boston, Massachusetts. I make videos mainly around street photography here on YouTube, but I also do other topics such as film photography. This is going to be a pretty talkative video, so uh, get comfortable and let's get started. Before I get into it, let's do a brief background on contact sheets. Contact sheets have been one of the most unique aspects of film photographer's workflow um, since the inception of film photography. It was where a photographer could see all of their photos on a single roll of film all at once and sort of use it as a table of contents to their archival process. Mainly used as a way to proof their images, these contact sheets were used by photographers to quickly go through their images and make selections that they would want to print later on. It also offered the opportunity for photographers to look at their images as a whole rather than just single individual images. That alone can help a photographer sort of better understand how they shoot and improve on their craft. Photographers who worked for publications would often send these uh, contact sheets from after they've shot um, on site. They would develop these contact sheets and send them off to an editor or a reviewer who would quickly go through these contact sheets and make the selections. So, you know, there's multiple different ways that these contact sheets have been used. A book that I highly recommend every photographer to get, and I've re recommended this book in the past in a previous video, that's Magnum Contact Sheets. In here are several contact sheets by some of the greatest photographers of our past, names such as Henry Cartier-Bresson and Elliot Erwitt. This book is truly groundbreaking for what it is and literally what it costs. Uh, most photo books, they can get pretty pricey, but this one I managed to get for about 30 US dollars. You know, as a street photographer, we never just take one photo of a particular scene. We work that scene and take multiple shots from different angles and different perspectives. And as I said before, you get to see all the images as a whole and see how these photographers worked those scenes. And that's, that's incredible insight and just goes to show how valuable contact sheets were and continue to be, you know, well past their everyday use. So it's 2020 now and, you know, not a lot of people are using contact sheets anymore. We're in this digital world, but, you know, there are a few people who are still very dedicated to the craft and still print their own contact sheets. Most people don't have access to a dark room, and so printing contact sheets, it's sort of a lost art form. But that's not to say that contact sheets can't be part of our workflow still in this digital world. So that's what I'll be going over today, how to make your own digital contact sheets and use them how they were used in the past as a way to proof your images and just have a cool way to archive your images from a single roll all in one image. If you're dealing with a ton of photos and you're scanning these yourself at home, uh, you might find this to be actually very helpful and make your workflow a lot more efficient. All right, without further ado, let's get started with step one, and that's to prepare your negatives. So the first thing you'll want to do is get your negatives into an archival sleeve like this. These transparent plastic sleeves with our film inside will essentially be what we're scanning and turning into our contact sheets. It sounds simple, just take it and throw it under the scanner, but it's a lot more complicated than that, and that's why I'm making this whole tutorial. These archival sheets come in different sizes, so depending on how you've cut your negatives, and the size of your scanner, your process might be a little bit different than my own, but at the end of the day, you should be able to do this with your own scanner. In my case, my sleeves and the way my negatives have been cut, um, it's just a little bit bigger than what my scanner can scan in one single scan. So I actually have to scan this twice, the top half and then the bottom half, and then merge the two images together in Lightroom. As an extra step to my process, but we will be making these contact sheets in Lightroom anyway, so it's not like I have to open up a whole new program to do this. Okay, so before we get started with the scanning, we do have to set up the scanner and the scanning software to the proper settings. So we're gonna shift our focus to the computer and, uh, and I'll go over that next step. Okay, so I'm gonna be using Epson Scan for this tutorial, 
but you should be able to do this with other software like Silverfast or ViewScan. So the most important thing you want to do first is make sure you're scanning as a positive. We're scanning as a positive because we're doing all the color edits and conversion process outside of the scanning software in a program like Lightroom or Photoshop. And this actually won't even work if you do scan it as a negative as you would you know, normally scan your other film photos. So make sure you're scanning as a positive. So if you're in Epson scan, you do wanna be in professional mode for this. I have my document type set to film with film area guide. This lets me scan the maximum amount of scannable area on my scanner. And obviously you wanna have the film type set to positive film, 48-bit uh, color. And for resolution, I recommend a high resolution of at least 1200 DPI. Personally, I think 2400 is uh, the sweet spot for resolution and not having a ridiculously large file. All right, so those are our settings and we're ready to scan. I'm using an Epson 850 here and you wanna make sure that you're placing the sleeves uh, glossy side up. So if you look at your negatives and they all read properly and they're not backwards, you wanna have that facing upwards. As I said before, I have to scan mine in two different halves. So it's just gonna be an extra scanning step. If you're on the same boat as me, I flip it horizontal and do the first half like this. And then I shift it over and do the second half. All right, so now that you have your scans and depending on if you have multiple scans or not, we're gonna send them all over to Lightroom. You can also do this in Photoshop as well, but since I use Lightroom for most of my editing, I find it a lot more convenient to just have it all on the same software. So once I'm in Lightroom and I have my images imported, I'm gonna select these two scans because I did have to scan two halves. You can ignore this if you only had to scan once because I'm gonna photo merge these two scans together. So I select the two, right click and find photo merge, and then I select panorama. And boom, just like that. You can do this in Photoshop by going to File, Automate, and then Photo Merge, then selecting the two images you want to merge together. Okay, so now I have my high resolution digital positive scan of my film. And now all we gotta do is convert these colors and get it looking like the film stock we shot it on. So for this process, I actually use a Lightroom plugin called Negative Lab Pro, which maybe some of you have heard of before. It drastically speeds up the process because I can instantly convert these positives into the proper colors for each film stock. But that's a paid plugin, and I figured most people don't have that, so I'm gonna show you how to do it yourself. This can be quite tedious, so bear with me in this process. The good thing is that you really only have to do this one or two times, and then you can make a preset from those settings to automatically apply for the next time you want to convert. So the first thing we want to do is invert the image. So we're gonna find the RGB curves, and so we'll simply just invert the curve. And boom, just like that, we turned it into a positive. So since we're using a negative, all these settings are actually inverted. So that's going to be a little bit confusing. So, you know, you can see if I adjust the white balance here, um, to make it warmer, it's actually making the image cooler. So you have to keep that in mind when you're editing your image, but over time you'll get used to it. Uh, you can just move dials and visually look at how it's impacting the image, which is usually how I edit anyway. <laughs> so, okay, so I'm just gonna adjust the white balance to here for now, and I'm gonna come back to it later. So I wanna add more contrast to this image, and I'm gonna do that in the tone curve I find the simplest way of doing this is to go to the parametric curve window and increase the lights, which would technically be increasing the darks because it's inverted. I find that actually maxing this out to 100 uh, works most of the time. All right, so now I've added some contrast into the image. 
uh, we can adjust the white balance and tint further to get closer to what we want. This is gonna take a little playing around um, until you get into the ballpark. Something that I recommend is zooming into a single image, uh, specifically one that's well exposed. When we zoom into this image, we can make the adjustments we want uh, to the color, white balance, etc., a lot easier. And as we're doing this to this one image, it's applying all that to the whole contact sheet. Um, we can just be a lot more focused looking into one image. A little trick I like to use to make sure I have my white balance set correctly is to look at the film border text and make sure it's a light brown slash orange. You don't want it to be red or green or yellow, and that would mean that your colors are not necessarily correct. But then again, <laughs> editing is all subjective and up to you as the photographer, uh, so do whatever you think looks good. And there we go, I'm pretty happy where this is right now. I don't have to be really picky about the colors because you know, at the end of the day, this is just going to be used as a proof sheet. And I just want the colors to be relatively close to the film stock I was shooting with. All right, so now that I'm done with these edits, I can save these settings as a preset and make ourselves a preset for the next time we want to do a contact sheet for this film stock. So in my own workflow when it comes to film, I usually wait till I have multiple rolls of film to get developed, and then I scan all that film together. I'll have each of those rolls in these sleeves, and then I'll scan those sleeves to make these contact sheets first. After I've made these contact sheets, I can go into each one and look for the shots that I want to scan at higher resolutions. If you really wanna have fun with it, you could actually send these files over to an iPad iPad and draw over it like you're in the 1950s. Except in the 1950s, they definitely didn't have iPads. So there you go, that's how you make digital contact sheets. I think it's a cool little thing that you can do that you know I don't think a lot of people realize they can do with their own negatives. Um, so even if you don't want to use this as part of your own workflow, it's still a fun project to try out yourself. So thanks for watching, I'll see you all in the next one.